Well, there's so much talent on that team with the Bandos and the Jacksons and the Campaneris and the Greens and the Joe Rudys and Billy Norris and Reggie Jackson and the pitching staff was phenomenal with Hunter and, and the bullpen. The bullpen they had the they had a ratio Pena and they had Paul Lindblad as the setup man right and left handed. Then they had Raleigh Fingers and Daryl Knowles as, this, as the relievers, and, you know, the left and right. And so they, they had a phenomenal. And, uh, it was just a team that uh, one of the greatest teams I've ever played. The the '78 Yankees was a fabulous team too because nobody liked one another. That's another story. But the, the A's and to win those three years from now just had a fabulous amount of talent. Well, then, then from Oakland, you end up in Philadelphia, getting back to the Philly cheesesteaks. And Kenny was out there when you were playing out there. And, 78? And, and, you know, in 76 in the playoffs, you went 7 for 9. The big red machine, obviously, you weren't afraid of them. Did they look like beach balls at playoff series? Uh, I always tried to rise to the occasion, as they say. I, I love the challenge of being in the limelight, being on TV, and being able to perform, you know, when it counted. And uh, actually, I, uh, Dave Concepcion dove on a line drive up the middle and snared it. Otherwise, I'd have been eight for nine. You know, wow. But, uh, but uh, I just, uh, I, I just, it was an opportunity to uh, go out and perform in front of thousands of people and do the job. And, you know, sometimes just dial in and get yourself ready. And, and the Danny Ozark led Phillies in those days. It was in 77, you, you had the Dodgers, you know. I mean, you're playing a good series. And then Vic D'Avalio, Manny Mota come yeah, up. You still see those, up. yeah, you still yeah. see those balls going by at the bowl. Greg Lazinski out there. and. Okay. Well, the, the hard part was that Bowie Kuhn probably should have called that game that day was raining so hard, you know, and so. But unfortunately, they didn't. And uh, uh, that turf, uh, those when the uh, ball hits on that turf, it really bounds and takes off. And you got them high hoppers up the middle. Nothing we could do. You know, you give them credit. Yeah. Kenny? Uh, going through some things on baseball uh, almanac, uh, G. You're from Connecticut, born in Connecticut. Yes. And I noticed a teammate of yours, Jimmy Pearsall, also born in Connecticut. Yes. And, and, and he was my first big league roommate. Really? Really? So now you see why I turned out this way, because when I went on the road, I had Pearsall as my roommate. And then when I got back to Anaheim in the locker, I had Belinsky here and Dean Chance here. I had no hope. There was something in the news recently of uh, uh, the passing of Mo Drabowski, uh, the prankster pitcher, uh, died Saturday, June 10th. Um, he loved to make crank calls from the bullpen. He was the prankster pitcher. Do you, do you remember him well? Yes, very well. The, uh, we would go at some of these old timer games and uh, he would call down and order pizza into the bullpen. Or his best one was, I forget the stadium now, but it was one of the stadiums on the East Coast. From the visitor's bullpen, you could call the home bullpen. He would call down and get the opposing pitcher to warm up. Yeah, yeah. He said he'd call down and imitate the voice of so and so. He said, Get so and so up. All of a sudden, so and so's up warming up, and then all of a sudden, the manager and the pitching coach would look down the bullpen and they see their pitcher warming up. Go, what the heck's he warming up for? Go, what's he doing? It's Ted Knight. No, didn't get him back down. And then he waited and he called and get him up again. So they get back up even more. <laughs> he would do this for, and, uh, and this poor guy was getting up, was going down, getting up, going down, and they never could figure out, you know, what the hell is it? So, it was the, oh, it's great. All the TV stuff down in Florida, Orlando. They brought a bunch of us guys like Pearsall and Steve Lyons and Mo Drabowski and John Lowenstein and a bunch of guys who like to have fun. Well, uh, and they had an audience, and we tell some of the stories like we're telling now, and then we finished it off with a food fight with the audience, which was really fun. But in the meantime, Mo had gone down to the snake farm, bought back about a 10-foot boa constrictor, and he started running through the audience and talk about <laughs> ladies screaming. I mean, purses are flying. He you was know. known for the snake, oh, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, were, we couldn't believe it. We had some fun. And of course, the irony, the bad thing about it was there was a couple of guys that were scared of the snake too, <laughs> and they were running. So I said, he "Come on, guys!" Born, he was born in Poland. Yep, yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not touching it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, anyways, Jay, you end up in the with the New York Yankees in 70, 78, and um, 77, no, 70, 78, 79. Yeah, the Bronx Zoo. Yep, that's Boy, what it was. How interesting was it really? Everything Sparky Lyle wrote about and what they reported. Everything about? what they said was true, just like the way it was a Bronx Zoo. And uh, were you there when Billy was there, or when I was Lemon there, came in? I was there when Billy was there, and I was there when Billy came back. <laughs> Nettle summed it up the best way I could probably describe it. Nettle, Nettle summed it up this way. He said, "You know, growing up, I either wanted to be a baseball player. No, I either wanted to join the circus or be a baseball player. And here I get to do both. So it was that crazy oh, of an atmosphere, oh, huh? Terrible, unbelievable. Nobody liked it." It was a great team that could turn it off and on at will. No nope. neighbor. Gotcha. 
V-A-G-N-E. So anyway, Kenny, right now we got a score of, look at this. Five to, to nothing. nothing. Huskies rolling over the bats of St. Cloud. You know, I mean, uh, I guess we've this interview has brought in good luck to the Husky fans out here. And Kenny, you couldn't ask for a more beautiful night. The wind's calm. Oh, down. yes, Johnny, you could ask for a more beautiful night. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so anyways, Kenny, you got something for Jay? I'm kind of curious. You've got a nickname, Moon Man. How did that come about? Rooming uh, in spring training, I had a big, tall, six-foot-six pitcher named Fred Wants. Freddie Wants. And uh, I was a rookie. He was a veteran. And he took me out one night, wanted to show me some spots. Now, in California, you have to be 21 to drink. And I was um, 19, 18. And so, to make a long story short, we went out to a couple places, and uh, we got in, got in after curfew. And Freddie thought that I had a key. I thought he had a key. Neither one of us had a key. So we couldn't go into the lobby and get the keys. And our room was in the back at the Gene Autry Hotel. It was like a motor hotel, you know, not, not a hotel you go up and down. And so I said, well, I know how to work these windows. Let me see if I can, you know, so I, there, was, there were windows that slid this way, okay? And you could move them, credit card, the whole thing. And Freddie was watching me and I said, Freddie, stand back so I let the moon shine in. It was a full moon. He says, that's all you need is some more moonshine. Okay, so anyway, to make a long story short, I got the credit card and I used to unlock the window, pull the window back, I climbed in, went in, opened the door, and we got, got in our room. And so uh, the next day, he started calling me Moon Man. Moon Man, and that's all, and it's still stuck to this day? Stuck to this day. I got a card, I got a card out now that's got Moon Man on it. I just saw it the other day. i never seen it before in my life. They did a replica of funny names, and a, they got a card of me in my Dodger uniform called Moon Man. I'm kind of curious as a young kid, Jay, uh, who were some of your baseball heroes? My baseball heroes, um, uh, I, I, of course, my hero obviously was uh, Duke Schneider and Mickey Mantle growing up. Okay. I, wanted to, I, I started out as a switch hitter. Um, one day I'd be Duke, another day I'd be Mickey. But uh, the, the guys that I, I, I admired as far as, uh, you know, I, I want, as hitting, I thought Ted Williams was the greatest hitter I ever saw, and Stan Musial was probably just about that much below him because he didn't hit as many home runs. I thought Willie Mays was the greatest overall player. I thought that, I never saw DiMaggio really play. I thought that Roberto Clemente was really underrated as a player and deserved a lot more credit than he got. And the sweetest swing that I ever saw on a guy was Billy Williams. Really? Yeah, um, Billy Williams. Yep. And, um, but uh, in, my, in my conversations with Williams and stuff like that, he told me that the greatest hitter that he ever saw was Rogers Hornsby. I thought he would say Ty Cobb. And he said, no, Rogers Hornsby was, he thinks, was a better overall hitter than, than Ty Cobb. And Ty Cobb heard about that and never talked to Ted Williams after that. The rest really? Yeah. He thought that Williams should have said he was the greatest hitter. Of course, Ty had all those records. And right. Those, yeah. Wow. John, I'm kind of curious if Jay has any thoughts on whether or not Tony Oliva, uh, Minnesota Twins' very own Tony Oliva, is uh, a candidate for the Hall of Fame. And Burp Lylevin. I say right off the top, Burt Blylevin should be in the Hall of Fame, not because he has 287 victories, yeah. but because he threw 50 shutouts. Right. And if you have 287 wins and 50 shutouts, okay, and you played all the years that he did, and somebody says, well, he got all those wins because maybe he played a long time. Well, maybe he played a long time because he was good. Did you ever think all. of that? Yeah, yeah. Two but the 50, the 50 shutouts shows that you not only you have to is able to win, but you're able to last. And you go out there, you throw over 50 shutouts. I mean, you're giving your team, your guys a day off. You're really doing a, a bang-up job in the, as a pitcher, okay, that many innings. Right. So he belonged to me just by having those 50 shutouts. And he's third on the all-time list in strikeouts. Never mind that one. Right, right. You know, we don't even count that one. We don't count the yeah. two. But the 50 shutouts, in my mind, would be a teammate that, you know, to give me that many shutouts in a career, I know that he's going to give me that effort and it saves our bullpen for another day we can really need. Tony Oliva has the numbers to be in the Hall of Fame. Will he ever get there? Maybe someday. But uh, again, uh, you know, you look at all the hits that, uh, that Tony O got. And, uh, there's uh, players in there with probably yeah, okay. less stats. 